Overwintering colonies must be queen right, preferably with young productive queens. Young queens lay eggs later in fall and begin earlier in spring than do older queens. Additionally, the queen's mere presence increases worker survival. Mice are a real threat to the colonies. They like to get inside where it's warm. And the bees are somewhat dormant, so they can't defend themselves. And the mice will nest in the combs. So it's a good idea to use an entrance reducer to minimize drafts and to keep rodents out of the hive. And you might need a hive tool to put it in place. When your colonies are well fed, well configured, ventilated, healthy, and queen right, you can turn to weather protection. Year round, colonies should face south to southeast to maximize sun exposure. They should be on high ground to allow drainage of cold air, and they should be shielded from direct wind. Here in the south, we don't have to go to great lengths to protect our hives against the weather because we just don't get the cold and snow like the northern climates. There, beekeepers sometimes wrap their hives with roofing felt or tar paper for insulation. Finally, the overwintering survival of bees depends on periodic warm spells. These bright, welcome interludes of winter are opportunities for bees to break their tight cluster, move closer to stored honey, fly, and defecate outside the hive. These warm winter days are also a chance to check your hives and make corrections if necessary. First, make an outside inspection and assess the level of bee activity at hive entrances. Bees should be contentedly coming and going, sometimes defecating soon after they leave a hive. A few dead bees in front of the hive is normal and healthy, but if the entrance is full of dead bees, something may be wrong, most likely starvation. It's best to only open hives when the temperature is at least 45 degrees Fahrenheit. But if bees are starving, feed them at once. Always work quickly in cold weather. Last spring, we gave each of our new colonies two hive bodies for a brood nest. This is common practice in much of the country, especially in colder regions. By giving bees this large brood nest, beekeepers provide lots of space for storing a winter honey supply. However, in warmer areas, many beekeepers use one hive body year-round, at the most giving bees an extra full honey super for winter. From a bee's point of view, the volume of one hive body is sufficient for brood rearing. So the real difference lies in the winter food supply bees need in your area. This ranges from 180 pounds in northern states and Canada to 60 pounds in the deep south. From a beekeeper's point of view, one hive body is convenient because a queen is easier to find, and fewer boxes mean less lifting. So, for our second spring, we decided to consolidate our two-story hives into one story and a honey super, the method more common in the south. That way, you can see both configurations and decide which you prefer. Our hives are now one year old, and because these are mature colonies, we can expect larger populations this spring, and hopefully a bigger honey crop this summer. But before I talk about spring management, I want to show you how we've changed these colonies. As you can see, we've removed one deep super, or hive body, from each colony, and replaced it with a shallow super. In late spring, we moved the hives to the mountains for the sourwood nectar, and then in the fall, brought them back here to overwinter. Well, two hive bodies full of bees and honey are heavy and a strain on the back and legs. We learned that migrating bees is hard work and that we had to work smarter. One-story hives are about half the weight and much more mobile. And believe me, that advantage is reason enough. But there are other reasons for using one-story hives. In the south, where winters are shorter and nectar flows come earlier, bees don't need as much storage space for honey as their northern cousins do. Here, one-story hives provide about the right amount of space. But on the other hand, they can be a disadvantage to you. Because of the reduced pantry size, you'll have to monitor the hive's food supply more closely. Another advantage is obvious when examining the colony for brood or mites or queens. 
it's easier to work the one hive body. Mite control is better because the pesticides are more efficient in smaller areas. If you're just getting started, you can save money on equipment by using just one hive body. And if you started like we did with two-story hives, you can store these extra supers and double your number of colonies next year. A disadvantage is one-story hives can become pollen-bound in spring. If there is a major pollen flow, the bees may store so much pollen in the comb that the queen has less room to lay her eggs. That could mean smaller populations at a time when the numbers should be growing. Another disadvantage is that when the populations are growing, a one-story colony can become too congested, making it prone to swarming. To consolidate two hive bodies into one-story hives, we waited until late winter when one of the supers, usually the bottom one, is less occupied. Remember, bees always move upward in the hive. We examined the frames in the bottom super for brood. Those with a lot of capped brood were consolidated into the top super replacing frames with less brood. The rest of the frames, those which had minimal brood and honey, were brushed off and put into the now discarded bottom super. Finally, a queen excluder was placed between the deep and shallow supers. We are approaching the anniversary of our apiary, the second spring. Our objective, as always, is to maximize colony population size before the main nectar flow. We did that last year by feeding the young colonies and medicating them. By June, they were strong enough to collect a sourwood crop, but they were still too small to collect the earlier nectar flows in May. That shouldn't be a problem this year. With fully mature production colonies coming out of winter, there's no excuse to miss any nectar flow.